and gentlemen, it is me, Dixie T, here live on the Dixie T Lounge. It's not really live because the audio for the Dixie Lounge live portion was a bit muddled, so I apologize. But here I am re recording it for you, the people. So hopefully, you like this nice little re recording of it, and it will sound a lot better instead of me being and everything else on the microphone. So, with that out of the way, Let's get into what the major, major topics that was going on this week in the world of pro wrestling and pop culture, what have you. First things first. Well, you have to talk about um, <clears throat> the WWE Intercontinental Chip. <sighs> first, we have to talk about the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Daniel Bryan. And supposedly, well, let's see, it is officially called now a concussion. Uh, it is a a concussion that a lot of people said. First, it was supposedly his uh, arm injury that was supposed to be in trouble. But now it looks like it's going to be, uh, it is uh, Daniel Bryan is basically out of the ring action, pulled away from the European tour, the UK tour, and uh, looking at WrestleInc.com, and it looks like it's saying that, um, uh, looking at the, um, <clears throat> that the, um, uh, the, from WrestleInc.com, see that, um, supposedly, um, that so and say it was a concussion, but then again, it seems to be that um, um, that um, that most of it's a concussion. Supposedly, it's a concussion, and if it is a concussion, I think this is a good thing. WWE is being smarter with it, uh, a lot more uh, to taking care of the guys, which is important. I feel that the you know, WWE should be taking care of them. Um, instead of forcing people to work through their concussions, you know, it's uh, forcing them to do that because, you know, we have like, you know, Chris Dorinsky, the guy who honestly did do much as a pro wrestler, but his, his research in concussions, I will say, if that doesn't get him the WWE Hall of Fame, I don't know what will. Says hell, not the NWE, just NFL, all those big contracts. Put them in, do something for him because the way he's doing the research he's had done. I mean, you gotta give him props for that. And hopefully, people in the chat, you know, not chat, but people down there be like, you know what? Let's give him, um, um, you know, just say, okay, you know, it's you know, he can, um, get some love. Uh, Crystal Wincy, get some love in the comment section below, by the way. Uh, but anyway, Daniel Bryan out for a while. Hopefully, he, but yeah, he's still scheduled to take on um, Bad News Barrett for the Intercontinental Championship at Extreme Rules. And one of the matches I am looking forward to for that pay per view event. In you know, we have a lot of matches going to. We're gonna have Roman Reigns. The, you know, we're gonna have Roman Reigns. You know, taking on the Big Show. In some type of horrible match. Oh, wait. Last man standing match. You know that's going to be a complete disaster. Uh, and Sheamus's and Dolph kiss my arse match. Where Sheamus looking like the, uh, the steroid juiced up uh, uh, Terry Taylor Red Rooster alpha going on. I just can't wait for that. That's going to be a fun match. Yeah, I just, you know, when I look at that, look, look, see this, this is a kiss my arse match, you know, WWE already did this before with Rikishi and Albert, uh, WWE Insurrection way back in the 2002, I thought this would just go away because it just seems like of all the things to bring back from the Attitude Era and all this type of stuff is, you know, not compelling characters, not the excitement from week to week. Is kissing someone's rear end. I just don't get it. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments section. That it's supposed to be the bee's knees or whatever. But 
I don't know. It, it just seems that this is just going to really, really suck. But I could be wrong. But back to the main point, I'm happy that Daniel Bryan is uh, hopefully um, healthy. After if he gets a concussion, you know, I hopefully he gets uh, better and protects himself better. And um, yeah, and um, you know, and uh, that's what I uh, hope that Daniel Bryan continues to get better at. Anyway, um, not much else to say. And um, oh, wait a minute. There's oh, I have to see this. Uh, by the way, uh, but it was Sheamus, and it was supposedly Sheamus. The action happened when Sheamus took down Daniel Bryan, and supposedly. By the way, I have to get this. At, no, no, wait. I, I do have this saved. Uh, but it says Seamus going this and his Twitter saying, Reckless? Ha <laughs> ha. Your idols are spoiled, litty livered runts. Hashtag are you not entertained with the rumor supposedly that he was reckless against uh, Daniel Bryan. You know, even though he looks like a steroid version, a steroid, uh, a lily white version of. Um, Stored up Lily White version of Terry Taylor, the Red Rooster. I got him. He's I I I do like Seamus. I do like that you know that little cocky attitude and such. You know, hopefully he continues to grow because by gosh, by golly, he needs to get something. He needs someone. He needs to be. He needs something other than that. He needs to uh, stop building himself up again. Because for the most part, which I'll say again, which I guarantee a lot of people would agree. Sheamus, for the most part, was an afterthought in the WWE. And hopefully with this new character in Hill Turn, I expect him to be more of, not more of an afterthought afterwards. But you never know with WWE booking. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a small little commercial, not commercial, but an OC remix break. And uh, what we're going to be playing is, um, you know, we're going to play something a little bit different. Um, we're going to be playing some, how about, let's see, we already opened up with some Super Mario, uh, see the, um, we already opened up with some OC, with, uh, see, uh, Portrait of a Plumber from OC Remix, the latest album from OC Remix. How about you continue from that album, and we will be playing, um, how about this? We will play Wings to the Sky, uh, Powerful Mario, track 10 uh, from this uh, great uh, CD from Halleck. I don't pronounce his name right. Hopefully, um, the dude, uh, hopefully if you ever, ever meet up with him, he, I know I say his uh, name right. But anyway, go um, um, you know, listen to this song. It's great. It's awesome. And um, yeah, anyway. This is the uh, Duke CT Lounge. Uh, this is basically pre-recorded, but usually this is live from um, AlanTalkShoe.com. And, you know, all the other usual trappings, the phone number. And by the way, if you want to call into the live show, when it is live, the phone number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. And also, if you haven't got the live show, again, how dare you? A live show is, you know, it's not the only way to get this um, uh, podcast. And you can find this on YouTube. You can find this on YouTube. Not Blip, fuck Blip. Um, you'll find this on Zip, Zipcast, Freaking Awesome Network, Manic Expression, and whatever stuff I could try to f- split this thing around. Anyway, we'll be right back right after this here. On the Duke CT Lounge.
And we are back here live here on the Dixie Lounge here on TalkShoe.com and also on, um, you know, not live, of course, but again, I apologize, my audio, my audio was a bit on the you know, weird side. So anyway, um, you know, hopefully this sound comes out a lot clearer. Anyway, let's talk about total nonstop action. And um, the story that it's already breaking the news, and it is, it's all over the, um, if I saw this early day on Yahoo, it's, it was shared all over today, and it is still, I think it's still uh, trending, I think TNA Wrestling, about the, the, the horrendous work environment. It's just, um, you know, I, I just... You know, it's just right here. It's from SportingNews.com, and it's from this article. It says, quote, pay issues in TNA Wrestling. And this connect, it does connect to when Taz is supposedly, um, Taz, who left, uh, who is, um, who let, who, who left, uh, told us up action. It's supposedly because I think it was a payment issue or whatever. But, yeah, it... When when this stuff right here, um, when I look at this stuff right here, and 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 I and I uh, I am a and I try, um, I really try, and, and you see right here, there's an updated article here on um, on uh, WrestleZone.com. He says um, he asked Taz, this is from Mike Killiam. I'll put this in the link description as well. He says um, Taz ask. About his release, and it was granted my release. We parted Ray's Mutri the right way professionally, wished him nothing but success. My contract was ending in the summer of this year, and I was looking to do other things and move on. I felt like I accomplished a lot in TNA. And TNA accomplished a lot with me, and in defense to them, they wanted me to stay. And there's a mountain of speculation why the two parts, saying that it was Taz not making good money. He said he was, saying that he did. He was happy to make um, money. He said the kind of money he's making, and uh, he says he if he wouldn't have stayed with long if they weren't they weren't taking care of him, and saying it was because of Josh Matthews. That's not the case. Um, you know, it seems like there's supposedly um, that this uh, there was going to be a follow a following out. Um, that's not the case too, and and uh, supposedly saying that there is, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here saying his uh, supposedly late like payments and such. Since my check was late, and I had to do what I had to do. The company was understanding in that they understood my position, and they were very professional, very kind, and very understanding. Business, is business. This is how I pay my bills and the family for. Um, uh, for over twenty years, it's well document documented, and it seems like they're fixing that now. That my funds were not rising to the house and were very late. I did a service. I wasn't paying for that service. I gave them notes, and they knew ahead of time that I wasn't going to come. And they were awesome about it. They were apologetic, apologetic about it. Um, but here is really something. To me, this does scream being unprofessional. When you have people who not only are the wrestlers and not being paid on time, and again, that's Taz's opinions and such. And if he uh, he's in there and he has his opinions, that's fine. But my opinion in that because that is not awesome. I right? I don't think it was. Uh, awesome about it because if they were awesome about it, they would have paid everybody on time. In fact, uh, with the sporting news quote, they were saying that um, here's one of them supposedly is the production crew, the real important people, the people that actually put the make sure everything is perfect, light up. Because honestly, it doesn't matter how good the work rate is or whatever, if you can't, if the production values are crap, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it, it has to be, you have to have a great commentary, you have to hear the commentary, you have to see the thing with the lights, um, and everything else, make sure the camera is focusing on every move and everything like that. That's what's important. 
<clears throat> when TNA, when they say these workers are still owed money for the one night pay per view tapings that took place February, February 13th to 16th this year in Orlando, Florida, which is, they're still waiting for those. It's been over 60 days. And, you know, for these uh, payments. And why didn't they get paid? Supposedly, they should be, um, uh, you know, the industry standard intelligence and that free that work workers should be paid within 30 days. Bigger entertainment companies like ESPN and Fox pay within 14 days, according to the article. But then, you know, when they said that they, they didn't, they were told by the company, the accounting department, that the checks for the one night only shows were cut on April 3rd, but no one has received them yet. At this state of time, no one's did so. Supposedly, uh, they said, quote, one of them says, quote, they're just blatantly lying to us all the time. They're probably still on the floor in Dallas at the office of Panda Energy. Panda Energy, the parent company, are told not up action. And, you know, it stuff like this really just, just really highlight the reasons why I really don't, really why that pro wrestling has that mark of, uh, of shame. Because you don't hear this in any other industry. You don't hear any of this stuff here. If it did, it would be instantly called out. But it seems like it's such a regular occurrence that more often times than not, people don't talk about it. It's just, oh, wrestling is going to be wrestling. This right here, because heck, maybe this is why you had those horrible drawings. Um, was those horrible drawings for those uh, you know match stuff for um, TNA a couple weeks back. You know, because I was watching, they were actually having pretty good stuff. I mean, you had a very good knockouts division. Heck, they're gonna have a knockouts only, um, uh, a knockouts only um, show TKO coming up the next week or so. You're gonna, they're gonna have, um, they have a really good story. They have some good storylines and such. Um, I think uh, Roxanne Spud as the X Division Champion. I like that stuff. I like EC3. I like Bram. I like Magnus. I like. It's those guys I really like. I like the Rising. I, you know, that sort of thing. I really like these guys. But instead, we have this stuff happening, and it just, it screams to me, I just can't really, um, you know, I just, I just can't, I can't support this company anymore. I cannot support anything what Total Nonstop Action does. Why should I support this company? Because when stuff like this happens, it brings a black eye to not only the fans of said company, but also the fans of the business itself. And, are, and, and this business has a whole rack of black eyes already. Too many black eyes in this business. Too many of them. Too daggone many of them. And and this stuff right here is going to make... How, you know how hard it is to try to get people to actually... Actually try to, to tell them about what wrestling is and such. Yeah, how hard to give them a chance because, oh, law is fake. And get, you, know, da, 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 you know, all the type of stereotypical stuff. But when you give them about behind some good stuff, they're, they're, they're impressed. They're like, yeah, this is nice. But when you see stuff like this, it makes our job of trying to spread the pro wrestling gospel that much harder. And of course, I know there's going to be TNA defenders defending this, and you know, hey, this, that, and the other. You know, it, you know, you like they're still doing all the good stuff, man. Don't worry about it. And it's like, you know, no, I, I can't, I can't defend this, and and you shouldn't. You shouldn't defend garbage. When a company you like, at least have the stones to say this is wrong. Yeah, you know, that's what at least, I mean, I'm not no uh, angel. I'm not a saint. I, I, I will firmly admit that because, you know, I support companies, you know, that had some really, not really stellar, in, uh, you know, reputations. I, I play on the um, Sony consoles, play on PS2, PS3. Um, you know, uh, I watch the WWE. I had WWE Network. And, you know, all the sins they have. In fact, they had the same type of stuff at least last year when he had that. I think there was something with the WWE. Let me um, take a look here, and I'll probably put the link in the description. It was a Reddit thing. Um, 
I see um, um yeah it it's it just um you know you know you know when when you have this right oh yeah yeah right here it is the right here the reddit put uh, screw right here when this stuff right here look at it look this stuff right here beats you know from the square circle and everything else it's um you know roadies like you know these type of guys to um you know they these guys work just hard really really hard to 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 make the show great and and then when you do you know th this stuff right here this is you know cuz these guys the production crew is a thankless job a really thankless job and when you have companies cutting their stuff cutting the 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 their their the, the bottom line just to hurt the guys in the trenches to hurt the guys who actually do the most important work it just makes things just so hard to um to root for and i i mean i mean at least you got me stand up to know this is wrong and i want people to start looking at this company and say this is wrong this is dead wrong and we need something people I, and i said this before in my podcast and i'll say it again i wish i won the lottery somewhere i i really did i really wish i could win the lottery i could win the lottery and and just buy the, a huge pop in the lottery and just take Dixie Carter away from Total Nonsense of Action. Just take it away from her. Because she has been proven that she is not even close to being a good representative for anybody in the wrestling business or whatsoever. I would get rid of her. And honestly, I don't care. I, would, I don't care or anything else. I would make sure that people in that the company will all be paid for. Everything is worked out. The production crew, the wrestlers, and everything else. So it won't be a complete... And, and talk to the people at um, Destination America so everything is okay, so we can continue to make your your TV your TV channel relevant and make you more, much more money and everything else. You know... I, I just don't understand what, what you know that this company so many chances so many things that I don't wish to have this thing die because I mean it's like less because honestly uh, Ring of Honor just had to cancel the show and supposedly they have bu uh, budgetary issues and you have um, Lucha Underground which they have great production values great everything else but they are just I don't know. They're in. The, I think they're in the red still, and I don't think they can actually make any uh, financial. Gain. There's no real money backing up with that. It's it's really frustrating. I don't know. I honestly do not know uh, to what to do, and um, uh, let's see. Um, I don't know what to say about this, um, the whole thing. I do not know what to do or say about this. It's, it's, it's frustrating. And I'm trying to cover my cursing because, you know, I know it's easy to do that and swear and do this, that, the other. I feel like I just need to start because honestly, if I swear and cuss and do everything and, won't, and all this stuff, at the end of the day, it just wasted, just wasted energy. And it is a wasted energy to... To, to just start yelling and cursing. Because at the end of the day, it seems like TNA will not learn from this. It just seems like until someone in that company, and there's someone out there just, just needs to get her Dixie Carter away, away from this business. And I think that the only way to save that company is to get rid of her. Why couldn't someone buy this company away? Why couldn't 
Barely cooled off. Uh, Billy cooled off. Um, uh, I don't know. The guy from Smashing Pumpkins. Why didn't he buy a company? It would have been nice. I would have been so happy. It would have been the way for Dixie Carter. It would have been so much better. Instead of what we have now. This is just. It's just pathetic. There's nothing else you can say. It's pathetic. Uh, well, that was fun. I need to get that out of there. Anyway, um, we're going to be playing a bit interesting. Um, uh, we're going to have a bit of divergence. Uh, we're going to be um, talking about, well, two trailers that came out. First, we're going to talk about the Batman v Superman trailer and the Star Wars trailer. And I talk about my thoughts about them and one of the best parts and the bad parts about them. Not best, but bad or whatever. I'm just going to get my feelings out of them and, and just gush all over them. Anyway, uh, we're going to be playing a something from OC Remix called Batman Cleaning Out Axis from the 1989 Batman game. With the artist Midi. 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 That's what it says. Um... Here, live on the Dixie Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. Recorded here on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me, Duke CT. Remember, as always, you can find this on iTunes, iTunes, uh, YouTube, uh, or youtubecom slash DukeCT, or freaking also networks.com, zipcast.com, midexpression.com, and everywhere else. Oh, and screwattack.com as well. Uh, over at the uh, they basically have to use a site and everything else says, you know, hey, user submissions and such. So, anyway, let's get this thing started. Let's get this party started, right? And let's talk about, since that was after the Batman thing, let's talk about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I love the trailer. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. I, I love the trailer. And you know why I loved it? It was because... It really focused on the aftermath of Man of Steel, seeing how humanity is looking at Superman. And this is honestly just slowly but surely, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the day that Supes and ba uh, Superman will be more appreciated and more looked upon as the man in blue, the most, I mean, that, you know, are, you know, looked up to in the DC, which eventually it's going to be. Um, next, we have Batman. Who um, is looking at this, being really judgmental about this person? Who I honestly like Ben Affleck. You know, people say, "Oh, Daredevil." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." Daredevil was 2003. In fact, the director's cut is supposedly out better. So, and besides, he's already redeemed myself in my eyes with stuff like The Town and. And um, Gone Girl, he really showed that he can be, well, the Batman. He has the chops and everything else. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's basically angling to directing Justice League. But at this point, I really think this is going to be a really good movie. Because I think these characters, I think they're going to really, um, really fit. I think these guys are going to really pull out something really important. 
and we haven't seen much anyway. So I wouldn't be surprised that it's going to be, I think, at the end of the movie, that be Batman and Superman will start the whole, the best bromance of all time. That's why I feel it's going to happen. And then you have Lex Luthor, who I think Jesse uh, Jesse Eisberg, who I think is going to be really good. That's just my personal thing. Um, and I think it's going to start the whole um, Justice League uh, thing. And Justice League Part 1 and Justice League Part 2, I wouldn't be surprised it's going to be Crisis. Let's just say I think all the everything's going to just really meld in one together. That's what I think is going to happen. And that's what I personally believe. Anyway, let's talk about the other thing that a lot of people talk about. Star Wars. What a trailer. You see R2-D2. You see the new joy. You see the new characters. You see uh, Luke Skywalker's hand. You see his narration. You see Han Solo and Chewie saying at home. It's, I mean, everything else. You see a, oh, you see Darth Vader, the helmet of Darth Vader. You see just, oh, I, I loved it. It was probably one of the best things I've seen from Star Wars in such a long while. I mean, only I'm um, 30, as I think I am. Yes, I'm 30. And I haven't really experienced the, well, the one thing that, Hang on, let me see. Um, um, let's see. Star. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know. See how how old was I? Do if I did um. Let's see. E. See. Turn. Of the Jedi. Let's see. When did that came out? Eighty three. Yep. Eighty. Nineteen eighty three. Only two a year away from my birth. Yeah, I didn't do anything. Also, um, um, yeah, Star Wars. But also, not just Star Wars just came out. By the way, the the new the new uh, movie and everything else. But also, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh yes, Star Wars Battlefront has been. Well, Unleashed, and I gotta say, I love it. And this might be, this might be the one of the things I might get one of those high up next gen consoles and such everyone's talking about. I might do something like that. I might actually do so. And supposedly in a um, article, I think uh, The Verge, uh, it says Star Wars Battlefront will connect to Return of Jedi and with Force Awakens. Very interesting, and I can't wait to see more of this because it looks like it's going to be a real fun thing. That, um, that because hey, I love me some Star Wars Battlefront, and I can't wait to see that thing in, in, um, in uh, focus. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped, I am pumped, I'm excited, I can't wait to see all these things come together. Um, again, I did the axe. I looked like the axe. Everything just reminds me of Star Wars, the old stuff, rather than the, oh goodness, the new, the bl- the bland, boring new. And I'm hopeful that they'll just retcon. Can uh, hopefully they'll retcon the whole midi chlorians away, which I even I think, honestly, George Lucas probably retcon on that stuff all the way. For the most part, even in the new trilogy. Except, for, I think, was the Darth Plagueis story read by Senator Pal- Palpatine. Other than that, you rarely heard anything about midichlorians. At least I don't think. Correct me that, people. And then again, you have to watch the Star Wars episode 1, 2, and 3 and actually start taking notes. And I don't want to do that to you. So, let's leave that away for you. But, um, honestly, I'm humped up. I'm happy. I can't wait to see them. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for me. Duke CT live, not really live, but we recorded here for you in the Duke CT Lounge. And it will be back live on Friday evening at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I'll get into my whole, you know, whole craziness and my whole spill. So if you guys want me to do so, yeah, y'all guys want me to do so anyway. So anyway, I will be doing that as always. And you can always be free to join me. Chat rooms are locked. All that good stuff. And if you can't join me, remember, you can always catch me on YouTube, iTunes, 
and uh, my expressions of cash with regards to network porn, screwattack.com, and any place I can try to get this thing on and share this whole, this crazy little podcast around so I can get more popular. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.